Hey guys, this is our chapter review for chapter 14, all about fractions. All right, so this chapter we learned about numerators, which is the top number on a fraction, and we learned about denominators, which is the bottom part of the fraction. So we also learned that fractions just means parts of a whole, or one part of a whole thing. So we learned unit fractions when a unit fraction would be one piece out of the total. So anything that has the one as its numerator is called a unit fraction. So the way we say fractions or write them in words would be one sixth like this, one seventh, one eighth, one ninth, one tenth, one eleventh, and one twelfth. Okay? We also learned identifying fractions to make a whole, which just means that if we have two fractions that have the same denominator, we can add them together. So like in this case, two-fifths and three-fifths would make a total of five-fifths, which is one, or the whole thing. Um, we know that the numerator is the number of equal parts, and then the denominator is the number of equal parts that the whole thing is divided into. So in this case, it would be two parts out of a total of four parts, or two-fourths. Okay, we also looked at a ton of equivalent fractions, didn't we guys? So if we look at this example, this looks like what we did in class actually. Here's our whole thing. Here we cut it into two pieces and we shaded one piece out of two or one half. Here we split it into four pieces and we shaded two out of four or two fourths. And then here we split it into six pieces and we shaded three out of six or three sixths. So we can see that those three fractions right there are all equivalent fractions. We also learned how to spot equivalent fractions on a number line. So here we have our number line. Here's our 0 and 1 and 0 and 1. We can see on this one we split it into two equal pieces. So we have one piece, two pieces. Right here is 1 out of 2, so that's 1 half. And then on the second number line here, we split it into four equal pieces. And this one is two out of four, or two-fourths, which is equivalent to one-half. Then we also learned a much easier way to find equivalent fractions, and that was by using multiplication and division. So we learned that if we multiply the numerator and the de denominator by the same number, that we will always find an equivalent fraction. So if we took the fraction 1 half and we multiplied the numerator by 2, we would get 2. Multiply the denominator by 2, we get 4. That tells us that 1 half is equal to 2 fourths. So that means that they're equivalent fractions. All right, we also learned all about comparing and ordering fractions. So that just means we learned how to figure out which fraction is bigger, and we could also put them in order from biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest. So let's look at like fractions first. Remember guys, like fractions are fractions with the same denominators. So here we have some like fractions. We have three sevenths or three out of seven, five sevenths or five out of seven, and one seventh or one out of seven. So we can see here from the picture that one seventh is definitely the smallest fraction out of these three fractions. And we can see that five sevenths is the biggest. And we know that because we know that one piece would be less than three pieces or five pieces, right? So if we were ordering this from greatest to least or biggest to smallest, we would say five sevenths is the greatest, then it would be three sevenths, and then our least would be one seventh. And our little helper friend is telling us when the denominators are the same, we compare the numerators. Okay, moving down to unlike fractions. And remember, unlike fractions are fractions that have different denominators. So here we 
have some unlike fractions, but these guys have the same numerator. So in this case, when our denominator gets bigger, our pieces get smaller. Remember that, guys? Because we only have one piece each time, but here, our whole thing is only split into five pieces. So that one piece is going to be bigger than if we split that whole thing into nine pieces, right? And then if we split it into seven pieces, we can see that that one piece out of seven is a little bigger than out of nine, but it's smaller than one out of five. So if we're ordering these fractions from greatest to smallest, we would have one fifth being the greatest, and then one seventh is the next biggest, and then one ninth is the smallest or least fraction. Okay, and then down here at the bottom, we also learned how to use multiplication and division to compare two unlike fractions that have different numerators and different denominators. So in this first example here, uh, they want us to start with the fraction one-third and five-sixths and see which one is smaller and which one's bigger. So we have to get those guys to have the same denominator. You can probably hear my dog, <laughs> Shiloh, in the background. She's shaking her collar and making it make a little jingle. Okay, um, so let's see. If we have one-third and five-sixths, we need to get them to have that same denominator. So we know that we can take three and multiply it by two to get six. So if we multiply that denominator, gotta multiply the numerator. One times two is two. So that tells us that one third is the same as two sixths. We know that two sixths would be less than five sixths. So one third is less than five sixths. In this case, we are starting with six twelfths, and they want us to tell if that is bigger or smaller than three-fourths. Now we need to get those guys to have the same denominator. So in this case, we can divide that 12 to get it to have the same denominator as over here. So we would go 12 divided by 3 to get it to 4. And then we have to do the same thing to the numerator. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that means 6 twelfths is the same as 2 fourths. So that tells us that 6 twelfths is less than 3 fourths. Because if 6 twelfths is the same as 2 fourths, we know that 2 pieces out of 4 would be smaller than 3 pieces out of 4. Phew, moving on. We learned a lot this chapter, didn't we, guys? Oh my goodness. Okay, we also learned how to use number lines and benchmark fractions. Remember benchmark fractions are those ones that they're so they're pretty standard. Everybody really knows where they are, so we can use those to help us compare other fractions. So some of the common benchmark fractions we learned about were one fourth, one half, and three fourths. So those ones are pretty common and we can kind of use those to help us. The most common one being one half. So if we see on a number line, here's our one half, and then we have to compare one half to something like four fifths. We can just do have a number line that's the same size and split it into five pieces instead of just two. And then we can see that four fifths is definitely bigger than one half. And then if we have the fraction three sevenths, we could also make a number line, split it into seven pieces and see that three out of seven would be smaller than one half. And then we could also use these number lines to order fractions from biggest to smallest. So we know that four fifths would be the biggest one in this case. And then one half would be the next biggest. And then three sevenths would be the smallest. Okay, we also learned how to write whole numbers as fractions. So zero, Okay, zero out of four. So anything with a zero in it that's a fraction is just zero. <laughs> and then we learned that any number as the numerator and the denominator, if it's the same number, that just equals one. So like in this case, it just means three out of three, which is the same as the whole thing, or one. 
And then we also learned that we can kind of look at fractions like this that have a smaller denominator than numerator. We can just divide. So we can look at it as a division symbol in a way. So if we have 2 over 1, we know that 1 can go into 2 two times. So it's kind of like saying 2 divided by 1 is 2. If we have 4 on top of a 2, that 2 is smaller, so we can just divide. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Here again, we have a smaller de denominator than the numerator, and we know 3 can go into 6 two times. So these are just three different ways that we could write uh, the whole number 2 as a fraction. All right. The last thing we learned in fractions unit, or chapter 14, I should say, was finding fractions of a set using models, and then we also did that with bar models and dividing. So in the first example, we have this lovely set of buttons. We can see that one, two, three, four out of a total of six are blue. So that means four sixths are blue. We can see that two out of six are not blue, so two sixths are not blue. And six out of six of them are round, or all of them, okay, the whole thing. And then down here in our second example, we can see one half. So what they did here is they basically split this into two groups. There's the red buttons and the white buttons, and one out of two groups is red. So if there's a total of eight, which there is, two, four, six, eight, so we can see that one half of the number eight is four. Okay, and then we could look at that here by using a bar model with our total of eight. We split it into two equal pieces, and we know that one unit is four because eight divided by two is four. So that means that one half of eight is four. Okay, that is it for the chapter review. If you want some extra practice before our math test tomorrow, um, you could go to Think Central, go to the student edition, and then you'll see the chapter review. This isn't the actual test. This is the one we do in class sometimes just to kind of get us ready. It's the review. So it's on page 160, and I think it goes all the way to 162. That is not required. It's just some extra practice you could maybe do out loud or print it out if you like. And then we'll take our actual math test in Think Central tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed our chapter 14 review, and I will see you soon.